What's it called? You want to be our light man? Light. Or Braxton, you want to do that for us? There it is. That's the one. Let's just look back real quick on this one. I know we did it already, but give yourself a quick refresher. The process is exactly the same. Given a polynomial, you find your p values and your q values. You divide them to make your list of possible rational zeros. You test them. We actually got lucky on the first one. Three happened to be a zero. That left us with a second degree or a quadratic. Unfortunately, this had to be solved using, uh, it couldn't be solved by factoring. It turned out the two zeros were imaginary, plus or minus i. How did we go from here? This is something the students always have a hard time with. How did we go from here to both of those? Because it's plus or minus, okay? it, it's going to get a little more complicated. Let's, let's do another example here. Example two, same type of thing. You're going to find all the zeros and then write the polynomial in factored form. Say what? Grouping one. Grouping one? Oh, did you? You got lucky, huh? Doesn't factor by grouping. So the factors of P, this is where we get the factors of P. That's not too bad. Plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus five. And plus or minus 15. The values of Q or the factors of Q. That, yeah, that comes from the leading coefficient right there. That's just plus or minus 1. Now, if Q is just plus or minus 1, then your values of P are the same as your values of P divided by Q. Are they not? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you divide anything by plus or minus 1, it doesn't change the value. So. This essentially right here is our list of p divided by q, since q is equal to plus or minus 1. That's a list of possible rational zeros. That doesn't guarantee that any of these um, even work. These are just possible rational zeros. It could be that, uh, that these are irrational complex. We, do got, we just got to choose and do synthetic division. At least one of them has to work I explain, continue. Because we can't, it's um, a third degree polynomial. Okay. And we, because of that, we, you know, we can't solve factoring any other way except with uh, this kind of division. Okay. That's not a bad argument. Um, before we go any further, I want everybody to stop and consider this question. Is it possible for this polynomial, p of x, to have only one complex zero? Because we know it's going to have three zeros, correct? Maybe this one is going to have two real zeros and one complex zero. Or maybe it's going to have two complex zeros and one real zero. What's the com Maybe all of them are real zeros and no complex. All the complex zeros have you guys hear what's happening here? If we get complex zeros, aren't they going to have to come from the quadratic formula? And if they come from the quadratic formula, isn't there always going to be a plus and a minus? So the question was, is it possible for this to only have one complex zero? And the answer is no, because if it has a complex zero, they have to come in pairs. Right. And that's something we're going to get to a little bit later, but just keep that in mind. Complex zeros always come in pairs. And for that matter, irrational zeros, if the zero is irrational, doesn't it also come from the quadratic formula? So those always have to come in pairs. 
Has anybody found one that works? Three. Positive three works again. Let's try three. There are not any missing terms from this polynomial. So we don't have to have any zeros in the synthetic division bar here. Cool. We get a remainder of zero. That proves two things. It proves that x equals 3 is a factor. It also proves that we can partially factor the polynomial into this. Factor, it looks so darn close. X squared minus 4x plus 5. Students try and try and try to factor. Matter of fact, I've seen this probably half of the time uh, with this kind of a problem. Specifically, this term right here. I don't know why this is so confusing, but I see this all the time. Well, this is just x plus 5, or x minus 5, rather, and x plus 1. There we go. It factors, right? Negative 5 times this positive 1 would be a negative 5 right here, and it has to equal positive 5. Does it factor? No, it doesn't. No matter how much you want it to, this one does not factor. Okay? If it does not factor, we have to find the zeros of this quadratic factor using the quadratic formula. So here we go. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus. The square root of b squared, that turns out to be 16 minus 4 times a times c all over 2. And it's the discriminant, the term underneath the square root, that uh, you've got to be the most careful of probably. <laughs> Be careful with your arithmetic. 16 minus 4 times 1 times 5. That's 20. So it's 16 minus 20, which is negative 4, all over 2. This turns into 4 plus or minus 2i, all over 2. And that changes into x equals 2 plus or minus so here are the zeros. We found all three of them. One of them was the first one we found, x is equal to 3. The other two were complex, x equals 2 plus or minus i. So that's the first part of what you're going to have to do on the test, is find the zeros. The second part is to write the polynomial in its fully factored form. So we have x minus 3 and then what the heck do we do with those other two zeros? Here's what I would suggest. And again, the better you get with this, you may not have to do this every time, but just maybe the first couple of times so you see it. I would maybe write this as the two separate zeros. This is x equals 2 plus i, and it's also x equals 2 minus i. Isn't it two, isn't it two separate zeros, really? Okay. Now, with each zero, x equals 2 plus i, you want to get one side equal to zero. So for, so for this top one in here, this one in red, if I wanted to get it equal to zero, I'd have to minus 2 on both sides, but then I'd have to minus i as well. So that turns into x minus 2 minus i. That's one of the terms, x minus 2 minus i. If you did the same thing to the other one, you'd have to minus 2, but you have to add i to the other side, minus 2 and then plus i. So the remaining one is x minus 2 plus i. And those are the three factors of the polynomial. Okay, I'm going to give you one to do on your own or do as much as you can on your own and maybe turn to somebody and ask if they're getting any farther than you or if you're, they're getting the same thing you're getting. So make, let's make this example three. 
Same two things. Find all the zeros first of all, and then write it in fully factored form. Get as far as you can on your own, and then uh, see if somebody around you can help you if you get stuck. Just so we're clear before you get going, how many zeros? Four. So uh, anybody, was anybody able to find rational zeros that worked? One and negative two. Okay. Well, first let's list what the possibilities were. P divided by Q plus minus one plus minus two plus minus three plus or minus six plus or minus nine and plus or minus 18. This would be the lot list of possibilities. Uh, it sounded like one works. Let's see. Look at that. We have a win. And what was the other one you said? Negative two. Now you guys remember, in, in case you forgot, once you find a rational zero and you want it to continue testing, don't go back to the original polynomial. Start testing now on these, if you're going to choose another number to test on. Okay. So now we're going to take negative 2 and use synthetic division on these numbers. 1, 2, 9, and 18. That way you're eventually going to get down to a quadratic factor. For some reason I can't get 0 from that. From this one, negative 2? Let's try it. Let's see what I did wrong. You see it? Yeah. Okay, so it does generate the remainder of zero, which means this is also a zero. So, so far we can partially factor P of X into X minus one times X plus two times, this gives us the coefficient of the quadratic factor, X squared plus nine. And this is kind of cool. This is a quadratic factor that does not have to be solved using quadratic formula. How else could we get the zeros? Because it, it doesn't factor. This is not difference of squares either. It's not x squared minus 9. Square root. Square root. Set it equal to 0 and square root. x squared plus 9 equals 0, which means x squared equals negative 9, which means that x equals plus or minus 3i if you square root both sides. So. I've said this a couple of times, and please, please do this on your test. List your zeros in a nice spot so I can find them all easily instead of searching around your paper. The zeros are x equals 1, x equals negative 2, and x equals plus or minus 3i. Now the polynomial in fully factored form is x minus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 3i. x plus 3i. Four factors because it was a fourth degree polynomial. Let's get to objective two. Write the equation of a polynomial when given the zeros. This is the last thing from 3.6. Then we'll get a little bit of a start in 3, 7. This is just the same process we did in reverse. It's going to start in fully factored form. You go backwards. Well, actually, it's going to start with the zeros. Then you have to write it in factored form from the zeros. And then multiply the factors together. Write a polynomial. With integer coefficients of 
that has the following zeros. X equals 2, and X equals 1 minus I. Now, we have to decide what type of polynomial this is going to be. I mean the degree. What degree? Is it degree 2 or degree 3? What is one of the factors, though? They, they have to come in pairs, though. Okay. A question like this is just really testing your knowledge of complex zeros. You will never, ever have one complex zero. Okay. If there's a 1 minus i, then it's implied. It's not explicitly stated here, but it is implied. There's a missing zero. What is that missing zero? X equals 1 plus i. But there could be okay. a missing real number, and we wouldn't know. Okay. Um, they wouldn't have done that. They, they will give you only one complex root and expect you to figure out that there's one missing. Okay. Matter of fact, write this down as a little star. Complex zeros, complex zeros always come in pairs. They're called conjugate pairs. So now, th now there are three zeros, which means it's going to be a third degree. It's a third degree polynomial. So, first step is to write the polynomial in its factored form from the zeros. P of x equals x minus 2 is one of the factors. Be careful on the other two factors. What do you think? X minus 1 plus i from that one. And then this one over here is x minus 1 minus i. So those are the two factors. Now, how come we can't just stop here and say, OK, this is the polynomial? The key is write a polynomial with integer coefficients. What that means is it has to be something like p of x equals something x to the third plus something x squared plus something x plus something. It has to be in expanded form where a, b, and c are integers. Okay, No complex numbers here or no imaginary numbers. So this could be done in any order, but it would be easiest to do it in the following order. Multiply the two factors together that contain the complex parts. Multiply those together first. In so doing, actually, if you do it correctly, you'll uh, cancel any term that has an imaginary part. So let's start by multiplying these two together. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. x times negative i is negative i x. And then start with the middle term. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 times negative i is positive i. So the last term, i times x is a positive i x. i times negative 1 is negative i. And finally, i times negative i is negative i squared. And that whole thing is going to multiply by x minus 2. And it's really not as bad as you think. Before you start multiplying away, now check which terms cancel, because there are quite a few terms to cancel here. What cancels? Negative ix, positive ix. What else? i and negative i. There's one more. It's the i squared. Did you guys forget what i squared equals? You need to remember that i squared equals negative 1. So really, minus i squared is minus negative 1, which is the same as that's really just a plus 1 there. Minus i squared is the same as plus 1. So if you notice, isn't anything that had an i gone? Yeah. So now we're going to end up with a polynomial with integer coefficients now, because all of the imaginary terms are gone. Now collect some like terms. We have a minus i, and a, or sorry, a minus x and a minus x. That's minus 2x. We also have a plus 1 and a plus 1, so that's plus 2. So what this really is is x minus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 2. Now we multiply those together. Okay. 
Okay. So just using the distributive property, x times x squared is x to the third. x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Negative 2 times this x squared is another negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 2x is 4x. And negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. And then collect your like terms to eventually and finally end up with x to the third minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4. Cool, huh?